ladies and gentlemen. And to open our panel on the topic, please, America, don't give up. Let's give a warm CPAC welcome to John James. Outstanding, outstanding. I understand, uh, I understand we're running a little bit behind schedule, so they cut my speech from an hour to 45 minutes, uh, so let's get started. Good morning, patriots. My name is John James, and I'd like to begin by telling you a little story. I'd like to tell you a story about a little boy who was born in Starkville, Mississippi. He lived directly across the street from Mississippi State University, born in 1941, but he couldn't go there because he was black. Despite growing up in the worst economic inequality and institutional racism that this country has ever known, he refused to allow vulnerability to become victimhood. He never allowed dependency to become his destiny. He paid his way through college. He served honorably in Vietnam. He moved to Detroit in 1971 to start a trucking company with one truck, one trailer, and no excuses, hauling beer back and forth between Detroit and Milwaukee. For the better part of the next decade, he fought government regulation all the way up to the Supreme Court for the right to compete. He worked. He evolved. Until he was able to provide a life for his family that was previously unimaginable. He grew an idea into a $35 million company automotive supplier before a change of management in 2012. That little boy is my father. My father, like so many others who've immigrated from all over the world and from the Jim Crow South for better opportunities, never asked for free stuff. They asked for a fair shot. I am not standing here on this stage because of socialism. I'm standing here because of free enterprise and free will and because self-determination works. When I was a little boy, I was taught to use my blessings to be a blessing to others. I was taught to take something good that you've received and turn it into something greater. I started by leaving home and attending West Point, becoming a Ranger qualified Apache pilot and flying 750 hours combat in Operation Iraqi Freedom. I returned home from the war to an automotive industry in turmoil a city in bankruptcy, and helped to grow that $35 million company into a $135 million company under five years. I got married. I got married, earned a couple master's degrees, and made a few little boys. John is six, Hudson's about to be five, and Christian just turned one. And when I look at my three sons, I'm reminded each and every single day that this is the greatest country on the planet. And like America, our stories didn't begin with us. I am the walking result of the American dream, and I believe the American dream is worth fighting for. I believe the American dream is worth sacrificing for. A few of my classmates gave their lives for it. We, all of us, must be willing to continue their fight so that all people have an opportunity, a chance at the American dream. That's what makes America exceptional. One hundred and fifty years ago, Lincoln warned us, America will never be destroyed from the outside. If we falter, if we lose our freedoms, it will be because we destroyed ourselves. A century later, Reagan warned us, freedom is never more than one generation away from extinction. Freedom is not something we pass along to the children in the bloodstream. It must be fought for, protected, and handed on for them to do the same. Tonight in South Carolina, there will be a primary among Democrat candidates who have been talking about how to con a generation into embracing socialism. In 2020, we must remember that Lincoln did not fight the Civil War to beat the South. He and his party, the Republican Party, stood up to end the physical bondage of black people and to keep this country together. This election, fellow patriots, is not about beating Bernie. 
This election is about freeing those in socioeconomic bondage in our cities and winning back a generation turning to socialism on our campuses. Listen closely, listen very closely, because I want to be clear, crystal clear. Do not underestimate the appeal of socialism for those whom the status quo has failed. For the American dream to prevail, for us to defeat socialism, for us to save a generation, we can't just say socialism sucks and assume that people will follow us. Stuck Americans don't want socialism. They just want the pain to stop, but it's up to us to offer a remedy that works we must show them an America where a child's outcome isn't determined by the zip code they're born in, where a good education is attainable and hard work truly does get you ahead. We must show them an America that protects our communities from tyrants without leaving our children vulnerable to terrorists. We must show them an America where a woman has better choices than life or death, where an accident or illness doesn't leave a family in financial ruin. We must show them an America where the son of a slave can become a sharecropper, the son of a sharecropper can become a mason, the son of a mason can become a truck driver, and the son of that truck driver can stand before you here today on the brink of becoming Michigan's first black U.S. Senator. Show me, you show me where in the world you can go from slave to senator in four generations and from poverty to prosperity in one, and I'll show you the United States of America. I will show you the American dream. We must counter the socialist movement of envy and confiscation with a conservative movement of access and opportunity. We must show this generation that free will and free enterprise benefits each of us without sacrificing compassion and conscientiousness for all of us. We must become the disciples of the American dream and share the good news unafraid with those who are being seduced by lies. That's how we win. That's how America wins. Abraham Lincoln showed us how to stand up to oppression and hold this nation together by sheer force of will. Reagan showed us how to defeat Marxist ideology without firing a shot. President Trump dares us to be great while continuing to tear down barriers and increase access to the American dream for the forgotten in every corner of this nation. But he's not done. And we're most definitely not done. We have a long way to go. And the president needs you. I need you. And most importantly, a generation on the verge of socialism needs you. The hour is hand, ladies and gentlemen, fellow patriots, and by the grace of God and your hard work, freedom will not end with us. The American dream will not end with us. We're just getting started. Thank you. God bless you. Let's fly.